Welcome to Your Cyber Path, the podcast that helps you get your dream cybersecurity job by sharing the secrets of experienced hiring managers and top cybersecurity professionals with you. Now, on to the show. So when it comes to integrity, you know, we mentioned the word hash, and I think it's probably a good time for us to define hash and hashing. And then we'll talk about digital signatures and I'll take hashing and I'll let Kip prepare himself for digital signatures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So now when you say hash, you're not talking about that stuff that comes in a can, right? No, 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 no. We're not, we're not talking about uh, hash or, uh, you know, drugs or anything like that uh, or hashish. Uh, right. We're not talking about a hash. Um, it is a, a encryption process uh, that is special. Now, this special encryption process, when we deal with confidentiality, we generally use what's known as a two-way process. So if I take a piece of data and I encrypt it, and then I hand it to Kip and he can decrypt it because we only want him and I to be able to read it, that would be confidentiality. And the the, the idea of that is I take this paper, this one-page document, for instance, I scramble it all up, and then I give it to Kip and he knows how I scrambled it so he can descramble it by using a certain key. And that's what we call a reversible encryption. Well, a hash only does that one way. It doesn't do it two ways. So if you take a hash of something, you're going to get a value. And most hashing algorithms are what are known as a fixed length output. So whether I take a sentence, I take a book, I take a movie, I take, you know, entire encyclopedia in Britannica with hundreds of books, put them together and put them through this hash algorithm, I will get the same value on the outside as far as the length. For instance, MD5, which is one of the most popular commonly used hashing algorithms up until a couple of years ago, it was a 128-bit hash. So if I put in the word A or the letter A or the word JSON or an entire you know constitution of the United States, I'm going to get 128 bits back in hexadecimal format. That thing serves as a fingerprint that identifies that file. Now, this is the great thing about hashes is that you can have the entire file and then you have this hash and I can send you both of them. Now, when you get it, you'll take that file, you'll put it through the hash and then you'll get a hash and you'll compare that hash to the one I sent you. If they match, that means that file hasn't changed from the time I hashed it and sent it to you. And that means you have integrity of that file. But if you add a single period, you take an A and make it capitalized instead of lowercase inside this you know, entirely hundreds of pages documents, it's going to make that hash look completely different. And, and that's the, the way that we use hashes. It works as this digital fingerprint. Now, I mentioned MD5. MD5 is what was really used for a long time. These days, though, almost everything is using SHA-256 or something higher than that. And the reason for this is that uh, when you're dealing with a fixed output, but an infinite number of inputs, you're going to have some things that are um, able to have the same hash value, right? And we don't want that to happen a lot. If it happens, we call that a hash collision. Mm -hmm. And so, for instance, let's say I had the sentence, Jason is the best instructor, and I had the sentence, Kip is the best instructor. If both of those have the exact same hash value at the end, I can then substitute one message for the other. And that can be a breach of integrity because right. you think you're getting the file I sent, which says Jason is the greatest instructor, but instead you got the one that says Kip is the greatest instructor, and they have the same hash value. And that's So you can't tell it's been tampered with. Exactly. And that's how we can get around this integrity protection. Right. This is how bad guys get right. around integrity protection. And so we had to have better algorithms that have a longer hash digest. So we went from 128 bits to... Um, to 1024? Uh, well, we, we went to SHA-256. We're at 256, oh, yeah. uh, 256 bits, which is kind of the common one now. Uh, SHA-3 uses 384. And there's a couple that go higher. But in general, 256 is, is considered pretty good. Yeah. Because when you do 256 bits, the amount of combinations is in the billions of numbers. So it, it's, it's a pretty big number. And so there's a very there's there's a chance of collisions, but it's a lot less than yeah. when you're using something like MD5, which has 128 uh, bit in, uh, outputs. And, and so that's why yeah. we kind of move to these bigger and bigger ones all the time. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's kind of the, the basics of hashing. And we're going to talk more about this as we go through and do some of our mock interview questions and things like that. 